Hi everyone, welcome back to another Cut Above with Chris. I've got my specs on, I'm going to take them off first. <laughs> I can't shave with them on, drives me nuts. And for those of you out there that don't know, it's my beautiful pink cast, just for a bit of a laugh, why not? Bright neon pink, best colour in the house. There was actually nicer colours, I picked this one just to wind the kids up and I came home and they actually like it, so I sort of shat on myself really. Right, head, head to head, Razor versus Razor, the Tatara Masamuni Nadachi 0.9 blade gap, 0.9 millimetre blade gap versus the Carve Christopher Bradley C plate 0.085 blade gap, 0.05 of a blade gap difference, not a whole heap, but we'll see how they both shave and how they both feel. Now, it's going to be extremely difficult for me with one arm at the moment to show you both razors, but I'm going to do the best that I can. And apologies if it's not the best, but here we go. So on this side, the one that's wiggling, is the Carve Christopher Bradley razor C plate. And on the right hand side, or I think it's the right hand side, I don't know how it is as you're looking at it. But the one next to it is the Tatara Masamuni. Now you can see that the, the Nadachi from Tatara, the head shape for me, it's a lot sleeker, it's a lot cleaner. It's got slightly less overhang. Hopefully we can see that. It's a little bit of overhang just there, with opposed to the, the carve. This is an absolute nightmare, what a cluster. Yeah, you can see the overhang there. Heaps of overhang on the carve. Now, the razor's handles, you can see just at the top there, on the Nadachi that it's got the sort of little dimples, I'll call them. I'll just show you the Nadachi just now. So that, that is the Nadachi razor from Tatara, or the Massa Muni Nadachi. And it's a confusing one. I, when I first saw the videos of it, when I first saw the pictures of it, when Tatara actually asked me whether I wanted to have a go at the razor and give them a review and have a look at it, the, the look of it does nothing for me really in pictures and videos. Now there is something nice about it, sorry, when you get it in your hand, it's an absolutely stunning little razor. It's not, the way I sort of describe it, I described it to someone earlier as well, it's a bit like the, the, the woman that you don't really like, she's not really good looking, but you get to know her and you fall in love with her. It's that sort of effect. And you do pick this razor up, it's beautifully machined, there's not a single mark on this razor anywhere. And the thread on it is so smooth, it fits together perfectly. Now, something I have to mention on here, I don't know if I mentioned it before, where this, I did, where the handle goes in there, actually, part of the handle goes into the hole. Now, what I wanted to do was put the carve Christopher Bradley razor, this is the Argyle handle, the one for the stainless version. I wanted to put this handle on the Nadachi just to have a look and see what it would look like. I know it's not going to fit right, but I just wanted to have a look. And unfortunately, I found that the handle doesn't actually screw on at all. It's a completely different thread on the Tatara razor, which is a bit of a shame. I think the way they're doing it, albeit it's precision milled and it's beautifully made, is really taking away from the fact that some people want a stunning handle like that, as opposed to a nice handle like that. Now, some people might look at this handle on the, the Tatara and think that's just phenomenal, absolutely love it, best looking razor handle I've ever seen. I think personally, <clears throat> and I talk for a lot of people, that that handle is not going to float many people's boats. I can see the, the route they're going down, the Japanese route, they're trying to use Japanese things. I can't remember the actual name of what this part is called, but there is a name for it, it's supposed to bring you good luck. I can see the whole story behind it, the backstory. I find that a little bit odd that a Portuguese company has gone down this route. Now, another thing I want to highlight right now here and then, the Tatara Masamune Nodachi razor. Sounds fucking awesome. The Carve Christopher Bradley razor. Just doesn't quite do it. And I think personally that lets the razor down a little bit. Obviously the backstory is great. The two guys that made it, Christopher... Chris, Chris, I can't remember Chris's surname, but Chris and Brad are the names towards that razor. They're the two guys that sort of invented it in the beginning. Chris made it, Brad helped develop it initially. It's it's too long and it's not a name that you think, fuck, that sounds awesome. You know, no offence to Chris, and my name's Chris, but no offence to Chris and Brad, but 
It doesn't, when I hear that name, I would never think anything of high quality razors or blades or anything at all. Now, Masamuni, which this razor is sort of named after, Masamuni Nodachi. I'm not sure what Nodachi is. I think Nodachi may actually be these little top, but I'm not sure. I actually just cut that out. But Masamuni is highly regarded or well regarded as the greatest ever Japanese swordsmith. Now, if you know anything about steel or anything about swordsmiths or anything about swords at all, to be highly regarded as the best ever in Japan is absolutely enormous. So straight away, if you know anything about swords or sharp edges or blades, if you've got an inkling whatsoever, you'll know who Masamuni is. And it just rings bells for me. It makes me excited when I hear it. And obviously the names of the razors, they sound a bit more sort of badass. And I like that. I think that's awesome. So in terms of the name, Tatara gets the win. In terms of fit and finish, I'm going to scale this out of 10, okay? I'm just going to give Tatara a 10 because it's impeccable. There's nothing wrong with it at all in terms of fit and finish. The thread is super smooth and comfortable. It all fits perfectly together. There's no blade movement and the finish itself is spot on. I'm going to give the carve a 9.9 .9 just for the sole fact of the actual threading. It's just a little bit rougher than what the, the Nadachi feels. And that's about it. Everything else is machined to impeccable perfection. You'd be so, so happy with either one of these razors if you want something that looks perfect. It is so top of the, top of the pile, really. There's nothing else I've used that comes up to this level. Closest, probably, timeless. But these two are absolutely impeccable, in my opinion. And the calf shaves better than anything I've ever shaved with. And yet to see whether the Tatara Nadachi gets to that sort of level. Now, <clears throat> this is quite a long-winded video, apologies. The Carve Christopher Bradley razor comes with seven plates. No, it doesn't come with seven plates, but it comes with an option of seven plates. So you've got the double A, the A, B, C, D, E, and F, and every now and then he'll run a G plate, just for a laugh, I think. I could never use a G plate. I think it goes up to F. I don't think it goes to G normally. The Nadachi comes with this. And that's it. It's the only plate it comes with. It's the only handle it comes with. If you buy an Adachi razor, that's what you get. No options. You can't change the handles for anything else. You can use the Masamuni original handle, which is pretty much looks like that. But it's a little bit shorter and it's got this dimpling effect all the way down. And it's the same thickness all the way down. Now, I will say with this one, these little dimples do actually give quite a bit of grip. I was quite surprised by that. But... I have to really give the handle and the design of the handle to the car. It's just classier looking. It's more streamlined. It's almost traditional but modern. It covers all the bases. It looks great. Both the finishes are great. Both great razors. Anyway, I've talked enough about the razors. Let's get stuck into the shave. So I'm going to wet my face. Now, I'm actually taking my wife out for a meal tonight. Well, she's taking me out now because I can't drive. But I'm going to have a shave before I go. So I'm going to use, this is my Williams Mug Soap again. I'm going to use this as a pre-shave at the moment, pretty much every shave because it's super slick. It's such a light scent and it doesn't really affect anything else that you use. And all I do is just rub it dry on a wet face. Now I've had to wait quite a while to be able to do this shave. I was hoping to do it earlier today, but Nanadachi did give me a really close shave. And although I felt like I had a bit of soreness on my neck, I didn't it actually heal. It was very quick to dissipate the pain and all the red spotting that was there after the shave, because it's quite efficient, disappeared quickly and my skin has felt great ever since. The products I use obviously help, but that was my experience with the actual Nadachi razor yesterday. So probably 25, 26 hours growth, something like that. Oh God, I love this stuff. I love the scent on this. I tell you what, if, if a big branded soap, artisan soap maker took this scent from Bluebeard Revenge, it's beautiful. I think it is a sort of barbershop type scent, but it's just exceptional. So what I'm gonna do is scoop a bit out of my finger. Probably too much, but you can never add too much. So there's loads of cream on there. Hopefully that focuses. I'm just gonna
Yeah, that's far too much cream. It's one of those creams that I've got in the den that I don't really give a shit about using loads of it. I can get it at my local store, shaver shop. But to be honest, I think once it's gone, I probably won't replace it. I'm sort of getting through my creams. I'm not a massive fan of creams actually using them. They perform amazing, but I actually really enjoy loading from a tub of soap. Right, the brush for today is my Envy Shave Custom. This one is abalone in here and just a sort of custom green. Now there is a little bit of pearlescence on this, but I can't quite see it. It's got a 25mm fan knot, black wool fan knot. I'm just going to dip it in the water. This is probably my favourite brush in the den, if I'm honest. As an all-rounder, that is. Right, start painting a little bit of water in. Now this lather is going to take a little bit of time to work on, so please bear with me. This is going to be a long video. I knew it was going to be long. I want to try and talk about these razors as best I can. Because ultimately I've got a razor here, which in terms of quality build, finish and engineering, rivals the calf. So I want to make sure I give it a fair crack at the whip against what I believe to be the best double-edged razor on the market at the moment. The car, Christopher Bradley. It's going to be very interesting to see, given that I've only got 24 hours growth, or there or thereabouts, what's going to shade better and what's going to give me the least amount of irritation. I have to take into account that I've used the carve every day for the past two years, pretty much, or every, nearly every shave, if I'm honest, apart from the odd cartridge shave and the, maybe the above the tie R1 Calypso comes out every now and then but other than that I'm just going to keep painting water in because it, it needs it These knots are absolutely amazing. Pretty much carbon copies in terms of softness to the tuxedo knot. But just in different shapes. And I do prefer, personally, I generally prefer a fan shaped knot over a bulb. I sometimes find the bulb knots, especially in badger hair, tend to hog the lather a little bit. One more dip. There we go. I think we're pretty much there. Yeah. Paint this in and then I'm going to splay the brush, create an amazing lather, and then test out these two razors against each other. Watch this lather grow. Now, if that is not a phenomenal ladder, I don't know what is. Is it going to perform as good? As a high quality artisan? Probably not. But I know this cream performs very well. And now that I've paired it with what is one of the slickest soaps on the market in Williams Mug Soap 
let's just see how it performs. I am generally sticking to creams at the moment just because I've got one arm and it's really difficult to load a brush with one arm on a tub of soap. It was mentioned to me today to maybe get the wife to hold the tub but she's sick and tired of me shaving anyway so. Right I'm going to start off with the Tatara, the Dachi which we've spoken about or I've spoken about at length already and we'll talk about the shave as I go along. I've got brand new Voscod blades, let me get that focus, Voscod blades in both razors, brand spanking new. Now I know it works superbly well on the calf, the calf makes this razor blade stand out above anything else at the moment. Does the Tatara do the same? On one day's growth, 0.9 blade gap, beautiful razor, let's see. Right, that, um, did I put the blade in it? Yes I did. <laughs> I just want to mention as well, this is a no prep shave. One thing I like about this razor as well, you can see the, the lower profile of the head allows me to get right in here and catch it all. I do struggle a little bit with the calf, I find it just a little bit on the chunky side. I'm going to shave all the way down here. I shouldn't, but I'm going to do it all the way down. I've only got 24 hours growth, so. It's very easy to find the angle. Right, first pass done with the Nadachi. Super smooth, super comfortable. Now, moving on to the calve, Christopher Bradley razor with 0 0.085, 0 0.85 blade gap, sorry, 0.85 blade gap on the C plate with a brand new Voscod. Let me just try something. Just switching straight back to the Tatara. They're very, very close in smoothness. I shouldn't really, I, I know that's a weird way of testing it, but I wanted to put them right side by side. Let me just. It, it, it's it's not too discernible. If I had to pick one for smoothness, it's a bit like, you know, when you do your eye test and you get through and you get to the point where they're very, very similar and you've got to pick one that's blurrier than the other if you've done an eye test. I would say that the Satara is just ever so slightly smoother. Just, and I'm talking a smidging. I can just feel that it's just more buttery smooth through the hair, but they're both so smooth. I'm really looking for things here, but I mean this, Now I know I've sort of cheated a little bit on some of that because I've used the Tataro on the left side but I'll just empty the sink out, I'll refill it back up and we'll have a bit of a feel and just see with that first pass how it feels. I've only got a day's growth so I'm expecting them to both be pretty similar but we'll see how they feel obviously at the end of the shave, that's when it matters. Right, just wet my hand a little bit. Well, I can tell you right now that the car side just feels ever so slightly closer. Very similar there, just on the cheeks, definitely on the cheeks. Feels closer. On the neck, they feel very similar. Yeah. So, based on the first pass, 
probably give it to the, the car raiser at the moment. Like I say, it's going to be a three pass shave, so. Look at this stuff. Bluebeard Revenge and Williams Muck Soap. What a pairing. I can't smell the Williams Muck Soap at all. I mean, this is thick, thick, creamy lather. Okay, that was a bit of a cluster. I ran out of storage on my phone. It happened about at the end of the second, or first pass, beginning of the second pass. So I'm gonna to have to talk you through the shave as best I can. The second pass went really smoothly from this side to this side. The Tatara, no weepers, no nothing at all. The calf, I had two little weepers down here. Very small, minuscule, irrelevant. On the other pass, the third pass went from this side to this side. Once again, very smooth, very comfortable, very efficient, very close, great shaves. I did my lips as usual. I used the Masamune Nadachi to finish off just because it's new and I really enjoyed it. It was very smooth, very comfortable. It got me very close around my lips. That's all I asked for, around my lips. I hate having hair around about here and on the sides. Very close, very comfortable, very smooth. They both made the Voskhod blade sing as good as any blade on the market in my opinion. Really, these two razors take these lesser blades and really bring them up a whole notch. In some cases, better than my favourites. You know, the Nassets, the Rubies, the Super Stainless, the Spoilers, the Aussie Super Stainless Vintage. It brings the Voskhod up to a whole new level. Now, the Nadachi. Yes, it's a beautifully machined perfectly finished, super smooth threading razor. The head is very sleek. I think it looks beautiful, the head. I think the head on its own is one of the nicest heads out there. It is its own sort of thing. The handle, on the other hand, I just think, I don't, I really don't know. Personally, I, and this is this is sort of I'm trying to be truthful with this here. So that was an Adachi handle. There's the Christopher Bradley handle. The, this one is the Argyle style handle for the Christopher Bradley razor. If you took a hundred people off the street that knew nothing about wet shaving, showed them these two razors and said, if you had to choose one of these razors based on the handle alone, just the handle, which one would you pick? I would say out of a hundred people. 95 at least would go for the, the Argyle handle on the carve razor. It's just so much more universal, it's so much more modern yet vintage, it's got everything about it. The Nadachi on the other hand, or the, the Tatara handle, and it's very similar in style to the Masamuni original handle. It, it's unique and it's for a select market. It, it, it's trying to pinpoint specific people out there looking for a specific look. And it's not the way to do things, especially early on in business. These guys have pulled it off and made it an amazing razor. But it's the head of the razor that makes this. If the head on that razor was crap and it didn't shave well, it would be not only a, not a good looking razor, but it would be a shit shaving razor. Now these guys know what they're doing quite clearly. The three blokes over in Portugal that make this razor know what they're doing. So they built a razor that is... Did I just stop that? No super high quality it's machined to exacting almost perfection the threads on the, the screw are better than the calf they are smoother they are better, slightly better but overall if i said to someone go and buy one of these razors i would be recommending the calf it shaves almost as smooth as the nadachi almost it's like a ball here behind, a smidging behind in smoothness. And that honestly is nothing. You wouldn't, there's no real massive discernible feeling, but I can just feel that the Nadachi shaves a little bit smoother. It feels a little bit more smooth and efficient. Now there is a lot more blade feel on the Nadachi 
compared to the calf. So if you like a bit of blade feel, grab an Adachi, honestly, it's so smooth and that blade feel almost helps in terms of a light touch. The calf hides the blade in my opinion on most settings, right up to probably the DE plate. It hides the blade feel a lot to the point that you forget it's there or you wonder if it's in there. So yeah, it, it, it's a good looking razor. It's just not a phenomenal looking razor. And I think if you could merge calf with Tatara, I think you'd be, you, the, the mummy and daddy would make one of the most amazing babies in terms of weight shaving. Honestly, it would make an amazing razor with the styling that they can put in a handle at calf, along with their head geometry and shave, mixing in with the Tatara head and the machining skills and quality and craftsmanship at Tatara. You, honestly, you're talking about a razor that would blow you away. So there's nothing real bad to say about either company or either razor. The customer service at both are excellent. The customer service at Carve is exceeding at all expectations now. So if you want questions answered or emails answered, Jack from the Virtual Groom Room on YouTube looks after you. And he's a top bloke. I spend quite a bit of time on Messenger talking to him about shaving, talking to him about Carve, talking to him about updates and upgrades and things that are coming along and things that are in the, in the pipeline. He's an awesome guy. If you've got questions, straight through to Carve and he'll get back to you as soon as he can. I can assure you that. No questions asked. Ask questions, just no questions asked that he'll deal with it. Finished off today with an Allen block. Feedback, both cheeks, chin and neck was uniform across the whole body, the whole face, everything was the same. There was no real bits that jumped out and went, oh, that's a bit worse than that. My skin feels great now. I don't have any burn or no tightness, nothing at all. A little bit of redness down on my neck as usual, but that's right across the band. It's not just one side or the other. The soap for today, I started off as a pre-shave with Williams Mug Soap. I finished off or completed the shave with Bluebeard's Revenge Shaving Cream. Them two together, superb. The lather was great, but the slickness was exceptional. It was really dense and protective. It was as good as most artisans. Really, really enjoyed it. I finished off today with the Allen Block and then Bluebeard's Revenge post-shave balm. It's like a jelly, leaves your skin feeling really nice. It's very similar to the feel you get from Wickham shaving post shave balm, very similar. The brush is absolutely gorgeous, it really is. I can't say much more about this brush. One of my favourites, if not my favourite in the den. I love the knot, I love the feel, I love the size of it, the finish, it's just exceptional. And Nathan Clark over at Envy Shave should be really proud of that one. And he makes amazing brushes, but that one is just exceptional. And I think that was it. Done and dusted. Hopefully I've given you a bit of insight into the razors. I'm going to do another comparison shave with these next on the head. If you want to watch that, if not. But I'm pretty confident the Masamune, Masamune Nodachi is going to take out the, the top spot for head shaving because it is so smooth and efficient. But we'll see how the calf holds up. We'll see how the calf does in terms of rivaling it. It's very difficult at the moment with one hand doing a head shave, so it's going to be a real test of the razors to see what one works best for me. But I just think that the Nodachi, with its small amount of blade exposure on the side there, which hopefully you can just see, there is blade exposure there, it's just not as excessive as that. Personally, in this day and age, I think you should just get rid of it. If you're too clumsy to open up a razor head and get a razor blade out, then yeah, that's all I need to say on that. I think having no overhang makes a difference, especially for head shavers, shaving under your nose sideways, it really helps. And as long as it's right to the edge of the metal, you're still gonna be able to grip it once you take that base cap off anyway without slicing your fingers off. So cover up the tabs, you don't want to win with most razors. And other than that, I hope you enjoyed the shave. I really enjoyed the shave. You guys, stay safe, drive safe, don't drink and drive. Like the video or dislike the video. I like my three or four dislikes. Thanks for coming along and disliking the video and giving me a little hit on my AdSense. Thanks a lot. I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.